2001 through 2006 Nissan Altima with the 3.5 liter engine crank sensor replacement. I'm Brian Esser from How To Automotive. I'm going to walk you through the steps of replacing the crank sensor. You're going to need to get the vehicle in the air. If you're doing this at home, use floor jacks and jack stands and get the vehicle as high as, off the ground as you can. So here, the crank sensor here is between the transmission and the engine block here on the bell housing and it's got this little cover here. We're going to need to remove this one 10 millimeter bolt on the cover here. To give you guys a little reference, over here to the left is the oil pan, the exhaust, the, tr the crank sensor, and the transmission. I'm going to use my Milwaukee 3 8 impact gun here to make quick work of removing this bolt on the shield here. Once you get the shield un unbolted, then you need to unplug the crank sensor. To do that, what you need to do is push the, the connector in towards the crank sensor, push the tab, and then pull the connector off like this. Now you can remove the one 10 millimeter bolt holding the crank sensor in. I'm using my Milwaukee again to do that and make quick work of that. Now you can grab the sensor and wiggle it and kind of pull it straight down and out. It has a little O-ring on it to help uh, seat it in there and make it tight. So now we're ready to reinstall the crank sensor. I put a little grease on this uh, O-ring on the sensor to help slide it back into the place and get it to seat all the way in. So once you push it in there, you just push it into a seat and then you go ahead and start the bolt, tighten the bolt. Uh, you're going to tighten it till it's snug. I just use a little quarter inch ratchet here, um, run the bolt in and then maybe a quarter turn more and that's it. Now you can go ahead and plug the sensor back in. Once you get it plugged in, uh, give it a little pull to make sure it doesn't pop back off. Then you can go ahead and reinstall the lower uh, protective cover here. It's kind of a heat shield to prevent it from getting too hot. So I will link up all the parts and tools that I use in this video in the description. That way, if you need to pick any of those up, you can find those there. I'm Brian Esser from How To Automotive. I'd like to thank you guys for watching my videos. Encourage you to subscribe. Invite you to head over to the howtoautomotive.com website for more valuable videos like this. And to thank you again.